Ever tried reading while jogging, cooking, or even juggling flaming torches? Yeah, doesn't end well. But with Audiobooks.com, you can conquer books without the circus act. Dive into over 450,000 titles, including more than 10,000 free ones. Get hooked on a bestseller, find your next obsession, or finally read that classic you've been avoiding since high school. And here's the inside scoop. Sign up today for a free 30-day trial and snag your first three audiobooks on the house. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E. We all deal with challenges in different ways. We all perceive things differently and find it difficult to see a way forward occasionally. My way of overcoming this is to be inspired by the stories of others. I have to say my mind was absolutely blown when I interviewed Ulana. She and her husband, Andrew, are based in the Ukraine. They had five children, one pandemic and one war to deal with when they launched their glamping business. But they were determined and as she told me, they weren't building a business, they were building a dream. Get ready to be inspired. This is episode 63. Glamping and unique holiday rentals are surging in popularity with the growing desire of customers to book holidays that deliver an experience. They are also the new business of choice for those wanting to improve their work-life balance. So how do you build a strong business like this that gives you the life you need and a great investment? I'm Sarah Riley and I want to share what I've discovered after being immersed in this industry for over 20 years to inspire you to find out more about what's going on. Welcome, this is the business of glamping and unique holiday rentals. Ulana, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. I have to say that I was really inspired by the fact you reached out to me to share your story because your story is one which is quite epic especially being based where you are so before we go any further let's talk about that where are you based in the world where is your glamping site based um our glamping and camping page is based in ukraine uh, which is for now in most news feeds known as the place of war um luckily enough ukraine is very big so we are located in the eastern uh, western part of uh, of the of ukraine which is closer to polish border which means we are really far from the actual front line it's like more than 1000 kilometers uh but definitely as as the ho- whole world and we especially are affected by the war um, and the story today is like that we actually launched and the first season of our camping business uh, was started uh, during the war time. So it was like two months uh, after the actual war started here. Um, but definitely the main um, idea of uh, having us at the podcast, and I'm so excited that you have us. Uh, thank you for, for that opportunity. Is more to to talk about Ukraine as a location, not only of the war, <laughs> as we, you know, most people wouldn't know where Ukraine is, also we are a big country in, in the middle of Europe, but now a lot of people know uh, about Ukraine, but know because of the negative effect, right, because of war. Uh, and I wanted to, like, maybe push a bit on the positive side, saying that, hey, uh, even during such difficult times, good things can happen. Uh, so my story would be kind of more inspiring people. So there's like no perfect time <laughs> to start your dream, right? Uh, so good things can happen even if it's a it's a worst day <laughs> of your life. Uh, and also maybe to to talk about Ukraine as a as a big country, as a country rich of um, natural resources. We have uh, nice mountains. Uh, we have uh, welcoming people. So maybe the day when the war would end um, and we'll live our normal lives. Uh, someone would consider coming to Ukraine, so can consider investing in Ukraine, uh, buying property here, starting a camping business here. So 
I think that that's like my main story, not just to share uh, where we at and uh, to to talk about Ukraine as a wartime, but to talk about Ukraine um, in in the future state as an evolving country uh, and as a nice and trendy market for for camping and glamping business. It's really interesting because. In my time working with lots of different businesses, business owners like yourself, helping them set up and and go through that whole process, all the steps that are needed to set the business up. I've always talked to them about what's been your biggest challenge so far? What's been your biggest barriers so far? And I have to say, I've never, ever come across somebody that war (laughs) is one of the biggest challenges. But it, absolutely amazing that you still persevered, you continued regardless, you had your dream, you knew what you wanted for your family, and you've carried on. And I think it's, you've raised a really good point there about that a country does need to promote itself and to look at the positive side of what it does. And to say that we we can't just be defined by what's going on in one part of our country we do need to continue with business as normal that's how the economy continues that's how people continue to enjoy you know time and their lives and that's important as well I know this it's terrible what's going on with the war Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about I wanted to talk to you because you have a very large family, don't you? You have a family of five. So right. that must have been a challenge in itself. But what what yes. was that part of the reason that you wanted to st- set up your business is because of your children? Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, the, the, the year we launched uh, uh, the campaign and the war started, uh, I just gave birth to my third um, daughter. <laughs> so she was actually two months old when we started. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a big family. Um, this is, well, we have my husband, we don't call it a business, right? We call it a dream. And that's actually what it is. And I think this is how how it started, and that's why we kind of keep going it no matter what, because we initially decided that we'll be flexible with this decision, and like it's just two of us with no extra investments. We have uh, both full time jobs, because we know that this project um, is not yet at the stage where we'll be fully able to uh, leave our jobs. Um, but anyways, yes, this is kind of a dream come true um, because we believe that uh, camping business and actually being outside outdoors is a healing part of um, our daily routine. Um, we we met with my husband uh, as we were in the scouting um, um, organization. It's like uh, in Ukraine, it's called, called PLAST. It's a very kind of um it's a national wide organization but it also promotes this uh like living in nature being able to cope uh in any situation uh being um uh, being able to live in a in a tent and make a fire and also all this kind of bonding together and and, and be a friendly person etc so this is kind of like where it started but also my parents um were both an alpinist and uh, I, we were also raised as a kids that we were usually having our best time outside. So we were biking, we were going to mountains, we were hiking, um, we were skiing. And this is the life, um, life approach that we share with our kids. So they also go to the ski school and we usually go to ski, they have bikes. And uh, as, as, as they grow up uh, with all the technologies and all the, you know, online world, uh, it's very important for us as a parents to show them that there's a lot of world outside of all, online. Um, and I know that there is a time that they, they will stick to cartoons and we need that silent time too. But also I do enjoy um, the idea that when we are out, like they're busy all the time. They have their sticks. <laughs> I don't know. They're um, they're dirty, but they are happy and they are tired. Um, and uh, when when we were younger and there were no kids, uh, we usually traveled with my husband uh, abroad. As as I'm saying, um, there are not much campings uh, in Ukraine, and we kind of discovered 
uh, for us that um, there's a lot of comfort that you can have um, living in a tent outside with a lot of infrastructure, but having the same idea that you are out, right? Um, and and for us, it was kind of uh, mind blowing. Like, oh, okay, so you can you can have a rest with the comfort, not just like you know, with no bathroom to go to. And you know, like this is what the first when idea came. So that's nice. Um, uh, and and that's kind of extended the limits because usually when um, young parents have kids, they need like more of comfort they travel with more luggage and more things they need kind of more but that's that's the way of adult thinking that their kids need more uh, that's not the case kids don't need more they need like clothes to change they need water to <laughs> to wash their hands but they need happy parents as well and that's when we we decided okay so we can travel with kids uh it's not that easy to hike with them because you need to <laughs> to carry them on <laughs> except of the backpack but but you can travel because you have you have a place where you can take a shower when you can uh cook food not just on fire but also use a fire and that's when we understood that for us it's even easier to travel and stay in camping or uh, some kind of facilities than in hotels because in hotel you have this all kind of you have a lot of stuff um, you need to check in and check out and that's that's the long process and then you, when you go into the, your room it's usually a small room and then it's so difficult to get those kids out <laughs> because they have a comfort they have a tv and etc and it's all about um, a long period that you are inside um, and we are kind of parents when we usually have a long trip just for the weekend. And we kind of have a lot of spots to visit, but we have like two days. So time time is, you know, is important for us. And that's when the idea came is like, hey, uh, having a rest with kids outside is the best option you can give to them. And kind of um, we find it very um emotionally important for us to be outside uh, especially as i mentioned nowadays we have a lot of stress right uh, uh work deadlines uh budgets uh war right um and this uh year uh, th this summer proved for us good that you need a place to go to where you kind of a bit switch off there was a period during this um this year when we were like constantly online and just sweeping the news feeds because you kind of need to know what's happening but when you go to the mountains there is some some at some point you kind of let it go <laughs> right because you know you have a sun you have a nature you have a uh your place where you sleep and and this is the the, the um, a very Im important place when you kind of feel safe right in all kind of meanings um, absolutely and and also you're switching off aren't you and you're yeah. making memories for your children right. the same right. way as your parents helped you have these amazing memories of being yeah. out in nature and you're helping them have the same so they're they're not just hearing the negative news all the time they're actually having these amazing memories and seeing that their parents are continuing to live a good life and to try and, um, you know, persevere and be strong. And I think showing by example is always so, so important. And so these are really fantastic reasons that you just charged ahead regardless. It, I cannot quite believe that you did with the amount of children and all of the other challenges you've had. But tell me a little bit about your business. What's your business? Is um, what have you set up so far? Okay, so that's actually um, a small pitch, uh, 100 kilometers from a, a big city, uh, which is a city of Lviv. Um, uh, this is a local um, uh, center uh, in the western uh, part of Ukraine. Um, the, the pitch, we actually found the pitch via internet, <laughs> which is strange enough, but we saw the photo, we'd come to the pitch and we've seen the uh, the view and the scenery and it was like fantastic we thought okay so that's it whatever we do here that's the view we, we want to have 
Uh, and that actually has the view for the uh, mountain, which is called Parashka, which is one of the uh, highest mountains in our region. It's not the highest in Ukraine, but it's, it's pretty high. Um, so the location is, is pretty attractive because we have a nice waterfall nearby, which is like four kilometers, a nice easy walk with kids. Um, you, you can go hiking for that for that mountain, which is a longer and a more difficult uh, trip, but also if, if adults or maybe some teenage or um, more grown up kids, uh, it's possible. Uh, and also we have some rocks uh, and nice woods around, and we have a small river running just uh, near the pitch, which is called Small River, and in Ukraine it's Malarichka, and that's how our camping is called, Malarichka, because we wanted to, to stick to the location, it was important for us. Um, we have an amazing community, because uh, we are located near a village, uh, and our main idea was kind of to attract the people that live in that village, to give them work, and kind of share our vision of that business um, and have them believe in that. Uh, because most of people, they work in the nearby uh, bigger cities. Uh, there are not much farmers anymore in small villages. Um, they usually um, have maybe not much cattle, so like one cow and a few chickens. Um, and we want to kind of promote them not to go for work for a big cities and they spend like two hours drive or three hours drive uh, to the city, but have something locally. Uh, and all the stuff that works with us are local people. Um, our administrators are two boys uh, and they are like 20 year old, <laughs> but they are amazing. They, they love what they do. Uh, they are helping us around um, and actually, um, the people that built uh, the uh, the building we have uh, on site are locals, uh, and that was a best uh, choice and best idea because they they re really feel like it's 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 theirs, right? So like they they belong to it. It's not like they are just employees, but they feel a part of it. And um, that this is something I really enjoy because I see that they like working there and they throw up ideas uh, how to improve something or what, sh what should we build next in there or where should we build it. We just like um, me and Andre just saying like, okay, maybe we'll do something there. Wait for it, wait for it. We have an idea, we'll do it. No worries at all. Uh, and that, that's amazing. Um, so the site is pretty small. Uh, we have a safari tents. Uh, uh, just the tents, there are no uh, actual cabins or buildings, maybe sometime later, but for now it's just tents. Um, we have uh, uh, two, two beds, um, tents, uh, and some have an extra foldable bed. Um, and also the, the pitch is allowed that you can uh, uh, bring your own tent and just stay. Um, we have like a one big uh, building, uh, which has a cafe um, and, and kitchen, uh, and also a, a, like self-service kitchen when you can cook uh, yourself. Uh, there's a stove and there's a big fridge. Uh, some of the kitchen utensils you can use. Uh, there's also showers with hot water um, and a bathroom. So showers, uh, male and female uh, separate, uh, same with bathrooms. Um, we have some storage rooms and uh, like laundry, small laundry. Um, so that that's basically it. So there's like just one big uh, barn-like structure, and mostly uh, those are just the tents. So some of these big safari tents have uh, have the deck. So uh, because the pitch is like uh, on the on the hill, uh, so it goes like um, in um, in levels. So is that uh, mainly to make the most of the views that you've got right. as well? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So tell me a little bit about the industry over there and uh, the the customer, I suppose, the guest. How is the industry now? Is it growing? Is it a new trend? Is it Has it been around for a long time? Tell me a little bit about that. So uh, 
as I said, the, mar the market is really just emerging. Um, there's no, not much uh, glamping sites. Uh, we were, as we were discovering um, uh, all the items that are here in Ukraine, it's like maybe five to seven uh, newly established glamping sites that just have like one or two seasons. Um, uh, the demand is is great and uh, definitely uh, uh, since a lot of are emerging just year by year uh, we had like a fully packed uh, pitch uh, during last summer which is amazing because we we didn't do any advertising at the time uh, we barely uh, um, switched everything like the hot water just june 1st and we out, had our first guest uh, we didn't have an electricity yet because all the bureaucracy, you can imagine it's a, it's a difficult uh, stuff uh, without war going on. But with war, uh, we had a contract like for a year, but it was, um, it was just delayed. Uh, but we had solar uh, panels and a diesel generator. And practically with that, we were functioning that that helped us with the electricity for for fridges and uh, mostly just uh, for water. Uh, but that was pretty much enough. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think that people are really re interested in that kind of experience. Uh, we had a lot of question about um, whether there's any um, possibility to go with the caravan. And I was pretty surprised because definitely in Ukraine, it's not a very uh, often item. You can see caravans, uh, they are pretty expensive uh, and there is no much accommodation for that. Uh, we do have a camper, <laughs> surprisingly, yeah, because we are a traveling family. We do, we have a, a, a caravan um, and it's actually parked uh, on our page uh, outside the building and we live in it <laughs> during the summer. Uh, and uh, and we know how, um, how how broad the infrastructure is in in UK for, for caravans uh, and like the the whole family uh, um, raised <laughs> in caravans during the summer, and I think another uh, like a new emerging market would be kind of a pitch for for, for caravans, um, and it would be interesting as well. Um, so yeah, as I said, with no advertisement, it's just like word of the mouth. Um, we got. Uh, at some point in, in July, we realized that we need to limit the number of people that we want to see on the pitch uh, just to ensure we are not overcrowded and still have this comfort. Um, uh, we have a site with booking, so we've asked that anyone who want to come, even with his own, his, her own tent, would need to book. And if, if we see at this point that we are like pretty packed, you say sorry. You'd need to visit our next week because we, we are we are packed. Um, so yeah, I think this is a very trending uh, sphere. Uh, there's a lot of things you can try on. A lot of options in terms of um, sleeping accommodation, like tents and uh, um, bubbles, right? Uh, all this kind of stuff. Um, so that's. As I said, Eastern uh, Europe is is really a place where they just started starting to get um, the speed on, uh, and there are no uh, like big infrastructures uh, so far. Uh, so that that's a good start. So, is there any one particular structure that you think is the most popular amongst guests or is this just such an emerging market that people will be interested in anything that's a little bit different i think for now you can uh, you can pick so the people will be surprised and interested and i know th there are a lot of um like cabins uh right now that they are like it being launched from here and there but but the cabin is a big of investment right it's much bigger than having any um, sort of a tent or infrastructure uh, but it's difficult to say if something is more attractive than the other I think the whole idea of uh, glamping camping and outside 
uh, kind of living outside or a sleepover outside is so interesting and new that like and now uh, this is the place where you can pick pick and it would be a hit uh, mm. the tree houses or or whatever that and what it, what about materials though are you finding it struggle to get the materials that you need for building and are you able to access the tent structures that you want it how how does that work in the ukraine at the moment um we mostly uh in our pitch we mostly build, uh, build everything of wood um so uh, and this is local wood uh as you would imagine um it's not difficult to well it's it's a bit of expensive. Uh, I thought it, it wouldn't be much cheaper, uh, but the price of wood uh, for the last two years actually raised a lot. Uh, but also there are a few companies in Ukraine that already can build uh, you a tent. Um, but they have the, like a wooden structure, uh, solid wooden structure, they like uh, um, with the canvas. So there are already companies that um, just launched and they can they can build you anything. So I don't think there's any problem with materials. It's interesting, uh, your your comments there about the wood. Um, this is something that we've had everywhere, that the material prices have gone up at crazy prices. <laughs> and literally some projects have had their costs double, which is insane, really. Um, but unfortunately, it's a sign of the times at the moment. But you were talking there about your structures and, and how you laid out your site. Do you What kind of additional uh, activities or leisure activities or leisure facilities do you provide? Do you provide hot tubs? Do you have uh, streams and rivers where people can swim? You know, what happens there? Do you, do you put... Um, playgrounds up or do you just say it's all natural just use the natural resources <laughs> how, how do you do that um, okay so we have a lot of ideas as as you imagine um the war <laughs> um stopped a lot of it um definitely when when we launched uh, last year it was a big of a struggle because at my end i had a more perfect vision when like the point when we are ready to invite guests. Uh, but this was the question to negotiate and we are like, okay, so this is an MVP, right? We are, we'll run it just for test. <laughs> we'll say that, okay, we are partially open, come and visit us. So uh, yes, there are a lot of ideas that still need to be um, developed. Uh, for now, we don't have much on the pitch and uh, during the last summer, it all was like structure work here and there. Um, we have some bikes uh, for rent. Uh, we do invite guests to go for a walk, uh, to go for the waterfall or to the rocks. We have this small river, just uh, like two stairway steps uh, of our pitch, but also a, a bigger river, which is called Stray River, when you can actually swim. Um, but that's like more of a, 40 minutes uh, walk. Um, this year we'll be establishing a playground. Uh, we have uh, like hammocks uh, along the, the pitch um, and like um, uh, like the, those kind of chairs you can you can have a rest and so uh, kind of a hammock between a hammock and a chair which is actually like hung on on the on, on the tree. Uh, so this kind of stuff. Um, uh, we have backpacks uh, for rent and especially those where you can carry on kids, like the backpack for the kids. Um, we have an idea of some kind of um, more, not a hot tub, but maybe a sauna, um, which is more, um, uh, more to promote when there is a bad weather. Uh, so that's pretty much an idea for the, for the this year and the next year, uh, at least. Um, and then we will see. We were definitely discussing the pool, uh, but that then we thought that this is kind of 
does it meet uh, with our idea of a more of a natural rest, right? Because with the pool, you need to have a lot of chemicals to get it clean. Um, you you need a, um, a machine for um, moving the water the sound, with the sound. And we thought, okay, there definitely are plenty of places with a nice big <laughs> pool where people just want to go for a pool. And maybe we want to attract people not just for the pool, but maybe for the the whole experience, um, maybe for a fireplace, uh, maybe for just uh, running around with your dogs. And well, uh, another point: there's not much place uh, for now in Ukraine where you can go with with a uh, with your pets, especially if you have a bigger dog like a shepherd or something or Labrador. Uh, and uh, we were really surprised when a lot of guests came with, with their dogs and were like, okay, finally, I have a place where to go for the weekend with my dog because I, I don't, I cannot have it in the hotel. Um, so yeah, so that would be just a place for ch to chill <laughs> uh, and to enjoy yourself. Um, and, and maybe we'll definitely be evolving with some kind of activities uh, for this year. Um, you will invite a person to do some kind of um, uh, master class uh, uh, to, to make uh, something uh, with kids. Uh, we have a really nice summer holiday, which is Ivana Kupala. It's kind of a mix of religious and before the religious times, but it's all about summer. It's all about making a huge fire. Um, it's all about um, bonding with nature. Um, we um, we make uh, those um, uh, fr from grass. I, I don't know how it's called, like. Um, mm, like a grass crown or something. Right, yeah. right. So you make this grass crown and at the end of the evening, you, you put those uh, crowns uh, on the river and they sh should uh, like swim off. So there's a lot of um, uh, traditional mixes in there, but that's a really beautiful holiday. And uh, I, I, I really wanted to make it last year, but that was not a good time. But this year, I definitely want to show my kids uh, this holiday because that, that that's really beautiful. So definitely all the activities we thought that we'll have on our pitch were, would be more uh, closer to nature. So maybe something doing with your hands, maybe some kind of pottery. Uh, so not not the usual uh, activities you have on the, I don't know, <laughs> to trade center or something where you go with the kids. So there's a lot of ideas that need a lot of maybe investments, but we kind of see it like, let's take one step at a time. And if we have people that visited us last year and they come this year as well, that would be a huge win for us. And if you can surprise them with at least minor improvements during um, the time that we're, they were not visiting us, uh, that's that's already a big win for us in the circumstances we, that you are now. Absolutely. And do you think that people are ready now to start celebrating those regular events that you would normally have celebrated before the war, but now... Do you think they're ready to start emerging from all of, I suppose, a bit of the trauma of it all? This is such a difficult question to answer about the point of celebration. And this is something uh, we are struggling the, the for the last year, the whole year, uh, because there's no time for celebration, right? But at the other hand, um, there's a lot of traditions that we want to keep. And we want to show our kids. And um, the thing that we are fighting for right now is being able to speak our language, to have our traditions, uh, and to uh, teach our kids the same that we were taught, right? So this is uh, we are fighting for. This is our friends are dying right now on the front line. Um, and you know, you can say that, well, we can, we can, you know, stop celebrating Easter or start celebrating uh, some kind of events for, okay, let's say two years, five years, but my middle daughter is five years old. So for her, a two year period is half of her life. I cannot stop her life for two years. And this is, uh, this is the idea why actually we 
keep going, right? We, we, we keep working, we keep having uh, our daily routines and daily traditions because, because of our kids, because they deserve to have a normal life. Um, and at, uh, at my opinion, <laughs> or what's my excuse for that, I would say uh, that I'm doing this for my kids. I want them to remember this year or that summer not by what happened to us. They, they will definitely remember it. They will learn it in books, but also to have their memories of their own, that they had an Easter and they had a Christmas uh, and that they have a lot of their national holidays. Uh, they still keep having that in schools and um, in kindergartens. They learn poems, right? Um, because that is important. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the life uh, they're living. And... I think that um, if we understand that it's not much of celebration, but that's keeping off a tradition, then this is important and, and we need to stick to it. Yeah. And I think that's a really lovely way of explaining it. And I think that what you're doing with your business and how you've set that up is amazing because you're opening up the potential for other people to do things that mean that they are creating a, uh, some level of normality for their family and to create those beautiful memories, lifetime memories that are so important for their children and everyone growing up. And as you said, for the very young ones, I mean, I've got young children as well and the same thing, you know, a, a couple of years go by and it's a lot of their life, isn't it? And it's very formative and to be closed down and not to be going anywhere and not to be knowing what it's like to enjoy nature and enjoy being nurtured by nature is right. yeah a, a tricky one and so the fact that you're opening it up to people and and allowing them to access it especially with their pets as well is really fantastic and so what's your hopes and dreams for your business for the next few years what are you hoping for what's your vision um, I think the main idea for us is kind of step-by-step um, -step improvements. Uh, we are learning like every day. We are, we are not in um, hospitality business. Uh, I'm in, uh, in, working in IT and my husband is in public relations. So for now, for us, this is a, like a daily education Um but we need to. We, we wanted to have it step by step and see how we can improve. Um, and a lot of we learn by actually running it, right? So we have a lot of feedback from our guests what they would like or like what their experience is or what they have seen. Um, but what we also understand is that at least at the location that uh, our pitch is right now, we definitely see it as a, a small small business. So for, for us, a, like a full, fully booked um, uh, pitch is like 60 to 80 people. And, and that's, that's, a, uh, that's a number we are okay and we feel that everyone is comfortable with. Uh, but definitely if you wanna scale, uh, or have um, another another business uh, that would be just in a different uh, location. So this is something we kind of understand day by day. Uh, but as I said, we want to add some um, improvements, some extra um, uh, uh, alternatives to um, uh, to rest. Maybe maybe a hot tub one day. <laughs> yeah, but maybe a sauna. Um, maybe I, I I don't know um, some kind of a more extended pitch for for kids uh, because initially when we were just launching we thought it's as a more of retreat for couples um, maybe for for young couples or, or without kids and and. And our idea completely transformed because from day one, we had people with kids, even if it was raining cats and dogs, we had kids, well, my kid, my younger was just two months old, but we have uh, parents that came with the six months old um, kids. And we, we, we thought and we understand that we were completely wrong, that people with kids <laughs> need a place like that. Um, so yeah, I think, um, uh, the, the idea is here to stay flexible, 
um, uh, to learn every day and kind of be able to absorb and hear back uh, what what people actually want because that's the easiest way then uh, you know build something up and then to understand that that's completely something no one is needing um, so we are pretty lucky enough like uh, you know in any other kind of business you need to run analysis uh, you know uh, set some kind of metrics and then figure out what what's going on and here just the weekend uh, ended and you have a lot of feedback you have uh, happy guests, uh, you have requests for this food or other food, and uh, that's easy. <laughs> so you have everything. It just do do your work. <laughs> do your work. Do your homework. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So, what would you say to other people, either in the Ukraine or in other parts of Europe, in other parts of the world? What would you say to inspire them, having gone through it all yourself, and now that you've got your business up and running and you've got these big dreams for the future? Um, I think that I would say that don't stop dreaming, right? And there's like no perfect time uh, to establish something um, because you can you can wait for that perfect time. It will never come. There's always something that will stop you, uh, some fears, uh, some risks, uh, whatever you name it. Um, if, if you truly believe in what you want or what you think you want, uh, just do it. Uh, just try try uh, as, as much as you can and, and that will happen. And I think the main idea is here uh, to not to be a perfectionist, right? Uh, because why I, I really admire the idea of camping and glamping because this is kind of like maybe a bad analogy about the uh, um, an old bar uh, or, or a pub, right? You, you cannot build it right away uh, with that um, atmosphere, right? This is something that comes with time. <laughs> the, the furniture is old and rubbed and etc. And the same is here. You, you cannot set um, where people will go or like where's the best place to put this table or, or or this hammock. This is something that comes with time because you need to see how the sun goes up and uh, and where people really enjoy uh, to having a rest or they don't like it. You'll put something out there and no one sits in there. So this is comes in time. Don't stress to make a perfect um, scenery because camping and glamping. I believe this is something that helps you evolve with time. Right. It's like, you know, you'll you'll put a tree and in, in five years it will be a nice uh shade, right? So you need to invest that. So this is a place where you can start with small steps at a time. And this is also an uh, idea that is uh, pretty flexible enough that at some point you can completely transform because a tent, you can put a tent and then remove a tent and put something else in there. Uh, if a trend changes or, or you have an idea of new business. So that's a kind, kind of a perfect canvas for your masterpiece. So just just try it out. Well, I think it's really inspirational what you've just said there. And I also noted down another thing that you said earlier, which is when you said, we don't call it a business, we call it a dream. And I think that's fantastic. I think for anyone else who's listening and thinking, oh, these challenges, all these barriers in the way, I can't do what I'm dreaming of doing. And you're showing us by your actions that actually you can. You can do those things. You just need to maybe approach it in a slightly different way, tweak and change and evolve and develop over time. And I think that's really inspiration inspirational and also you know gives us all very valuable lessons to learn from and so tell me where can people go to get information about your site and where you're located what's your web address so it's actually ukraine and near Lviv, and it's uh malarichka.com <laughs> which is pretty difficult for English speaking people. Uh, but I believe you might put this information uh, at your uh, podcast, like um, just a link. Yes, I will absolutely add all of that into the show notes so anybody can see and in the description of the podcast as well. So anyone can see 
all the information and click it from there and go and have a little look at, at what you've done and to be inspired by you more. And I'm sure that people will reach out and will get in touch with you because you've got obviously a lot of knowledge to share. And um, and I really do appreciate it very much that you got in touch with me and wanted to share your story because this kind of thing I find incredibly enriching to my own life to understand and learn how people have used glamping as a way of improving not only their own family's life but the lives of other people around them who really do need it at times of challenge and so I really do thank you very much for coming on the podcast today and it's been a great pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I must say that um, your podcast and your uh, courses are a lot of inspiration for us as well, because we were studying a lot of information before actually jumping in that kind of business. Um, and I would suggest to anyone who's actually looking for um, an extra information, this is a good start. So Inspired Courses gave me a lot of information to think of and to search for. Uh, so please, please study, please listen. And thank you for, for having us, for responding. Uh, it was kind of a really surprise because, you know, it's like, uh, hey, <laughs> featuring the famous podcast I've been listening to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, any, anything can happen. As I said, it just it was just a try. <laughs> Absolutely. And you make your own future so often. It's often all you need to do is step outside of your comfort zone and actually write that email or pick yeah. up that telephone or get in touch in some way. That's the way to do it. That's you step outside of your comfort zone and that is where the most growth happens. So thank you so much again for coming today. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you, thank you so much.